All right, what's up, y'all? This is Darren Travis. Welcome back to Mix at Night TV. I got two guests in the house, a longtime friend, Jerome Richardson, and my man, Glenn Brown. You see Jerome on the top, my man, Glenn, on the bottom. All right, so I know, uh, first up, we got Jerome Richardson. That's my man. I know him for about 20 years now. I'm saying he played um, overseas basketball, grew up with him in high school. He's, he's known well throughout New York City, a park legend. You know what I'm saying? Jerome, you want to give a little introduction by yourself and um, how you became a Knicks fan and then you wasn't a Knicks fan and then you, you want to tell a little history about this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, yeah, like you said, played in the parks in New York City, got an opportunity to leave the city, travel to Texas, Louisiana, play ball, and went overseas. But all that's unsaid is just the Knicks, man. The Knicks growing up in New York was my team. My straw is when they let go of a, a fellow West Indian, Patrick Ewing, then let him retire as a Knicks. From then on, I realized the Knicks, to me, was unfaithful, and they were doomed after that. We got Ben Baker back. <laughs> so, we already know the story how that ended, but yeah, just not letting Patrick Ewing retire there, and we still not giving him this best due is what turned me away from the Knicks. I still watch from a distance, but I won't say I'm a fan. Now I don't have any team. Since I left the Knicks, I've been wandering around looking for a team, but I'm still undecided. Right. I'm not going to New York like that. <laughs> right, and, and I respect Jerome's um, perspective on the Knicks because, like I said, he's he been through the dungeon like me growing up. All we did was play ball, train. You know, we both thought we was going to the NBA. You know, he played, he played um, overseas, you know what I'm saying? So he, he, he dedicated his life to basketball. So when it comes to speaking sports, you know, I always value his opinion. Um, is there anything that the Knicks could do, Jerome, to get you back to being a Knicks fan? Um, to me, it's deeper than any player, any coach. I just think, to me, I think the issue and it has been is management. Mm -hmm. I don't know who upstairs is doing the wrong things or whatever, but... Time and time again, they're doing the wrong thing. I mean, right now, with David Fishdale and the pieces they have in place, it looks like a bright future, but I'm just not sold yet. And I'm not one of those, like, oh, when they win the championship or they make some playoffs, I'm going to hop on the bandwagon. No. I just want to see the moving parts moving in the right direction. Then I can say, okay, I'm a Knicks fan. Dead or alive, like, no matter if they win or lose. But as of right now, I don't really know what direction they're going in, so... I say another year or two, and then I'll be able to make a decision if I'm coming back or not. <laughs> All right, that's the, that's definitely well respected. All right, now we're gonna go down to the bottom to my man Glenn Brown here. Knew my man Glenn for about 13 years now, 13, 14 years. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's another one that's dedicated to basketball. Man, we had some battles in the YMCA. You know what I'm saying? I respect his opinion too. We 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 uh basically. Grew up together in, in, in the YMCA, playing ball against each other. We, uh, we also coached together. So, you know, he has experience coaching, coaching the youth and everything like that. And um, you want to give a little background about yourself, Glenn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like I said, my name is Glenn. Hey, I've been a Knicks fan, too. You know, just like Jerome grew up, Patrick Hewitt, John Starks, M days, even Stephon Marbury days, you know. Even the days of Stephon Marbury, we like the Knicks. In New York, you go out to Madison Square Garden, you hype for the games, you go watch games, all of that. But like Jerome said, man, you you just get tired of the, the inconsistency of the Knicks. Every, you always say every year, next, the next year, we're going to get them next year. I mean, I remember when they had T-Mac. That was my favorite player, T-Mac. They get all these players, but they get them at, at the end of their career instead of getting them when they're good or keeping them. I mean, the Knicks have a bad track record of uh, keeping good Wait, to me, mm -hmm. keeping things that they, should, that they should move up. I mean, remember, we had Danilo Gallinari. We had uh, Wilson Chandler. True. We had all these good players. Let them go. To me, one of the better teams uh, was with the Raymond Felton and uh, Amari Stoudemire. Raymond oh. Felton and Amari Stoudemire in there. So that was a pretty good team. We added Carmelo. Next couple of years, made second place to the uh, second place, but then what happened after that? That's the question, you know. So, um, but I like the Knicks. So I watch the Knicks, and the Knicks game is on. I'm watching the Knicks. I hope they do well, just like the road. We want them to do well. We're from New York. We're from New York. We want them to do well. But you know, it's good that Darren 
just having this uh, conversation about the Knicks and uh, kind of getting it out there about the Knicks. So appreciate you, Darren, for doing that. No problem, no problem. And, and, and one of the teams that you said you liked was with Raymond Felton and Amari Stoudemire, and then when they, but they traded half that team for Carmelo. But um, I feel like the team we have this year, this is why I'm in, I, I like the team this year, is similar to the team that we had before Carmelo came when we had Amari. Like you could say Julius Randle could have, because he averaged about 24 last year. He couldn't have the same effect Amari had, we hope, hopefully. I feel like he's on the verge of being an all-star. And we have Dennis Smith Jr. We don't have Raymond Felton, but I feel like Dennis Smith Jr. could take the next step. We had Landry Fields. You can't tell me that R.J. Barrett is not better than Landry Fields. Landry Fields had one good year, and then it was, it was downhill from then. From then. Um, who else we have? We have Wilson Chandler. Who we have instead of Wilson Chandler this year? We have Marcus Morris. Marcus Morris is a good player. So, yeah, so I feel like the Knicks are similar to that team that you just mentioned. So hopefully we do good this year, make it to the playoffs, and maybe a year from two from now, like Jerome said, we could get that star player, or maybe one of the players we have will turn into a star, and we will really start making some noise. But like I believe, like Jerome said, we won it two years away. So I love optimism. I love the optimism. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, let's get into the first topic. All right, the first topic we're going to go on is um, second-year players that the Knicks have, all right? Out of all the second-year players that the Knicks have, I want to know who you guys think is going to have the breakout year or the biggest second year with the New York Knicks. So the second-year players that the Knicks have is only four players. We have Alonzo Trier. He was a rookie last year, so he's coming back for his second year. Um, we have Dennis Smith Jr. This is going to be his third year in the NBA, but it's going to be his second year with the Knicks. So his second year with the Knicks. Uh, who else we have? We have um, Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson, last year, you know, he did good with the lobs and everything and um, setting picks. And he, co he caught everything by the rim. And he was a great defender. He was blocking people, jump shot, three-point shots and everything like that. Um, is he going to be the person to step up this year, show a little offensive game, score on the inside, maybe a little mid-range jump shot? And then the fourth person we have, who else was a rookie last year? Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox, my main man, Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox, he had a shaky year last year. So he did good some games, then other games, he was only all right. I think um, he needs to be a little bit more aggressive. Sometimes he shies away, stands in the corner too much. I um, also feel like he needs to get strong. I think it was a shock to him how the speed of the NBA was his rookie year and how strong dudes are. You know what I'm saying? So I, I guess he was in the weight room this summer. And uh, he looked a little bit stronger in the summer league when I watched him play. So out of those four players, we're going to start with you, Jerome. You got Alonzo Trier, you got Kevin Knox, Dennis Smith Jr., and Mitchell Robinson. This is going to be their second year with the Knicks. Who you think is going to have the biggest second year with the Knicks? Uh, with the Knicks, the biggest second year? I'm going to go Alonzo Trier. You see, I'm going to just break down all of them and then I'm going to make a decision. But Alonzo Trier, I'm going to look at him. He's a role player. He comes off the bench. He had an amazing year last year, four role players. Like he could have started on certain teams. The way he played last year could have been good for his five minutes on certain teams. So as a role player and being in the NBA, I think he's he's solidified for another three or four years. Like he's good. Like just moving forward, if he does nothing in this year, he still be good. Teams will still want him. But if he does do good, then that will help the team. But like I don't think he really needs to like have a breakout year. I think he proved himself last year. He just needs to be consistent moving forward. Who's next? Um, the Mitchell kid. The Mitchell kid, he's a big piece. But like like you said, last year was his first year. A lot of people still don't even know about him. So, yes, he could have a breakout year. How big is that impact? I don't really know. With the NBA being a lot of big heavy and him being in the East and that grind down East and you got to go against the, the bigs in Philly and then Boston and all the bigs all over. That's going to bang you and push you. I think he, he should have a... He should have a better year, but I don't think that the season is riding on him, what he produced. If he does what he does last year, I think the Knicks will still be fine either way. Now look at Kevin Knox. When he came in, he was supposed to be like the next big thing. I think by them drafting um, RJ, that took a, that takes a lot of pressure off him. Like you said, he got stronger this summer, and he's, he was in the 10. But the thing with him is now, I think he can just go back to focus on playing basketball. 
He don't have to live up to that New York media. He don't got to live up to any hide because all that's going to be on Archie. And True. all that's going to be on a lot of other players. So he can kind of take the backseat role and just work on his game and play. To me, obviously, he's the last guy. Dennis Smith Jr. Like, I think, like you said, he's the oldest of the two-year players. He's been there three years. This is his third year. It's the reason Dallas let him go. I don't care what anybody says. It's the reason they didn't keep you. I think he have a lot to prove on his shoulder. I think a lot of people think he's just an athletic player. Like, you're the starting point guard for the New York Knicks, one of the biggest franchises in, in, in the league. Like, media is going to be all around you. Like, yes, you have a couple other veterans on the team, but I think for as far as the Knicks need to go, it has to be him. He has to have not just a solid year. He has to have a breakout year. Like, he has to have an amazing year this year for the Knicks to do the type of things that everybody's expecting them to do. So, so he, I think it, I think it's more riding on him being the, being the second year player on that team because this year third year I'm sure something contract wise he needs to do for him and his family moving forward I'm sure like this is third year I'm sure he wants to prove to people that he's really good anyway and carry a team like I said Dallas let him go so I know he got down his shoulder so I think it has to be him I think moving forward the other kids are kind of younger but. Trends and the role player, the other two kids are younger. It has to be him. Out of these, out of this four, he's he's a more experienced one, and he's the more important one in my opinion. Definitely, and um, and I agree with you. Like, with, he's one of the players that I pick. If um, you guys saw my last um episode, I was speaking on Dennis Smith Jr. and I was saying how um, in his rookie year, he actually averaged 15 points per game. That's that's good for a rookie. I mean, last year, he kind of fell off. I guess the league caught on to him, and then Luka Doncic came, and then, you know, he had to share his minutes because they, like, you know, wanted to put the ball in Luka's hand. But um, I feel this year, four more points is not a lot to ask him. If he averaged nine, I, I, I predicted him to average 19 points, and hopefully he could get eight assists because he needs to get the team involved because now you got more scorers on the team. You got RJ, who's going to want the ball. You got Julius Randle. So I feel 19 and eight should be a, a goal for him. I think yep. I think for his career, Stephon Marbury averaged 19 and 8. I think it's possible Dennis Smith Jr. could do that because um like I seen him in the gym. I've been watching all the all the um pickup games he's been playing. His jump shot looks good. I don't, is it fraudulent? Because it's summer league. I mean not summer league, but it's summer pickup ball. I don't know, but I watch about five or six different pickup games and his jump shot is going. If his jump shot is going, you know you can't stay in front of him. And two once he gets to the basket, you know he's going to dunk on you or he could dish it off to other players. So, with that being said, Glenn, out of those four people, you know, me and Jerome was going with Dennis Smith Jr., but you have Mitchell Robinson, Alonzo Trier, Kevin Knox, and Dennis Smith Jr. Who do you think is going to have the biggest second year? I mean, the obvious answer is Dennis Smith Jr. Oh. That's the obvious answer. The guy averaged 14 points, the most out of those four players that you just know, right? I mean, I think uh, the only other player that was in double digits was Alonzo Trier at 10 points. He was averaging 10 points. But the others averaging 7. And, mm-hmm. you know, nobody's averaging more than Dennis Smith Jr. Um, and I do agree with you that he is going to average more. New York is a big market. Uh, I think Jerome touched on He got the big spotlight in New York on you, right? Mm-hmm. But the Knicks did a good job of adding a lot of pieces to take away. I mean, they added... Uh, Taj Gibson, mm-hmm. they added Alfred Payne, they added uh, uh, Marcus Morris. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they added all these veteran players that are that have calm these calm these guys down. And you know, to to the point of him being traded from Dallas. I mean, he got traded for Chris that's, yeah. that's a big trade. That's mm-hmm. a big. That, I mean, Dallas is basically saying, we like Dennis Smith Jr., but man, can we give up? Uh, Zingas, but can we not get for Zingas? But we got to trade him. You know, I think I think you, it was a it was a it was a trade that for Dallas was a no brainer. Right, right. Uh, but I, I definitely think Dennis Smith Jr. is the guy. He's going to be the breakout star of 20, uh, 2020, uh, and you're going to see Knicks. You know, they're going to do better because of him. Okay, that's my opinion. Your opinion, uh, Kevin Knox. You know, Darren, uh, you said this, he needs to get a strong guy. My, my memory from the summer of him is, uh, <laughs> is him getting the ball just taken out of his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're talking about Zion. Zion, right? You know what I mean? Zion. My memory, that's what we see. <laughs> Zion Williamson in the summer league, one of the memories that we have is 
him taking the knock, ball out of Kevin Knox's hands, and he, so he got to get stronger. He got to get uh, he got to get in the gym. If he does that, he's gonna be great. But like you said, he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for the the strength of the NBA. And yeah, I, I was talking about this last year. You like what? Kevin Knox. Wait till you see Kevin Knox. Uh huh. But he didn't live up to that. But um, well, he just, he has to get stronger. He needs to get better. He needs to not worry about the New York media. He needs to not worry about. But if those veteran players they brought in, they're gonna help him out. Yeah, but he's only. Not, He's only 19, I think, uh, maybe 20 this year. But, you know, saying 20 years old, man, he got a lot of time. Do you remember how your, your body looked when you was 20 years old? I'm, right. sure, I'm sure he wasn't the size he was now. The question, the question is, will the Knicks give him the time that he needs? Uh, uh, the will they give him the time that he needs? Because, you know, they, they cut that leash short sometimes. It's like, we, we don't want to wait. We don't want you to develop here. We, you're you're, a, pro, you're a, a hot commodity. Let's trade you off and get somebody that... Uh, possibly could help us right now and they need to not do that. Right, right. I, I, I understand what you're solely saying because like I said, he's 20 years old. You got R.J. Barrett who's 19 and then you got Dennis Smith who I think is like 21 or 22. The crazy thing is they all need to develop but can they all develop at the same time? Like, if, R, if R.J. is doing good, you know, R.J. was a third pick. Kevin Knox was the ninth pick. You know what I'm saying? If R.J. is doing good, dude, like, you put Kevin Knox on the back, back burner. Do you, if, D, if Dennis Smith is doing good, like, can they all develop at the same time, or they will, they will look at look at look at OKC. OKC had Westbrook, Westbrook, Harden. They yeah. all develop at the same time. And Ibaka, right? Yeah. And Ibaka. Yeah. yeah. They all developed at the same time. They had to get rid of one. Yeah. Because he was just that good. They they knew that they couldn't keep him in money wise. But no, it was it was it was the fact they they didn't want to pay him. Uh, when I see being out here, OKC is the issue. They could have kept him in the pocket. They didn't think James Harden was worth that money. He wasn't even asking for a lot. He didn't know his worth until they put him out there and then Houston said $99 million. So now you can't compete with Houston because he was wanted about $30, $40 million. They didn't want to give him that. They wanted to give him more around 20 Right. So he was like, I'm out of here. Right. But $20 million, let me see what anybody else can give me. True. Uh, yeah, I'm out. True. Yeah, somebody else believes in me more. So, so that's what, been the issue with that's what I see even with yeah with OKC. That's been the issue with them. So but like with the Knicks, the Knicks just need to the Knicks, I think, like you said, they got a good young core, they need to stay there and develop. Right. Kevin Knox, he's not not the same type of player, but it reminds me of Trevor Reason. Mm-hmm. You know, was there. Remember they had Allen Houston and Spreewell. I remember one game Trevor Reason said like to the media like they don't play me, I need to play more, and this and that. And they kind of was like, threw him into the fight. Mm-hmm. He went out there and scored like 27 points or something like that the next game. Right. So you know what the Knicks did? Instead of them starting to play him more and, and increase his minutes, they sat him on the bench to prove a point. Like, you don't talk to us that way. Right. First you threw him in the fire, you came out the fire. And now, he's showing you like, he deserves to play more minutes. And instead of you doing for him, you got rid of him. So it's like, that's like stuff that I've seen over the years. But I'm not a Knicks fan just watching. Like, look look at this. Like, look at why I'm not a Knicks fan. Right, Stuff right. Stuff like that. And Trevor Reason, what, he got one, two championships? Yeah. He helped the league. Like, without him, the late Kobe don't win that one. Mm-hmm. Right? So he's been a steady veteran, like, what, 15 plus years? Like, that could have been all with the Knicks. He you know, know, one thing, though, David Fisgill, I personally think he's a really good coach. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't think play his coach. coach. That's not his culture. He, he allows his people to express themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. He allows them to do that. So I don't think it's going to be the same with David Fitz there. He had these other coaches that really didn't have a handle on the mix. But I think Fitz is the kind of coach that um, he takes up for his players. And um, I think he's 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 in the end. Def- definitely, like you said, like David Fisdale is, is a player's coach, and I feel like in the past, like you had you had coaches like Larry Brown, who was just more of a yo. You bet you better listen to me because if you don't listen to me, he benched Nate Robinson, he benched Stephon Marbury. He just he just was like, you listen, I'm the coach, and what I say goes. I don't I don't care what you say. You gonna play this way. You see what I'm saying? But David Fisdale, he kind of reminds me of um Mike Woodson. If you remember when we had Mike Woodson, he was a player's coach also. He took he took he told J.R. Smith, listen, you're gonna come off the bench, but you're gonna become six man of the year. And what happened? He became six man of the year. He had he even had Carmelo Anthony playing defense. I know we always get on Carmelo for not playing D, but I remember when Mike Woodson was there, Carmelo was actually diving on the floor, blocking shots, stripping people, playing D. He was one of the best coaches they had during that stint. Yeah. One of the best coaches. 
So I think last year, Fisdale didn't really have the talent to coach. This year, he has better talent. So now, I think this year, you really have to judge David Fisdale. You can't judge him over last year. Let's see what he do. He got vets on his team. He got some up-and-coming rookies and second-year players. Let's see what he do this year. Um, and speaking about rookies, let's get on uh, my man, R.J. Barrett. So, R.J. Barrett, you know, he was drafted with the number three pick. You know, all the Knicks fans was hoping that we get number one. But we didn't get number one. We ended up with number three, which was R.J. Barrett. To be honest with you, R.J. Barrett was the number one, projected number one pick coming out of high school before all the Zion Williamson hype. Remember, in high school, people were just saying, like, all Zion Williamson do is dunk or whatever like that. He ended up being on the same team as Zion and Duke. And even though Zion is the number one pick, he still averaged more points, more assists, and I think they had the same amount of rebounds. So I don't think a lot of people realize that, all the hype over Zion, but RJ scored more points than him at Duke. He averaged like the same amount of rebounds, and he had more assists than Zion. So, Jerome, what do you think about RJ Barrett, his game, and what he's going to project to be in the NBA and how his first year is going to be? Um, I don't know. That kid is, to me, he's a wild card. Mm -hmm. like, he's very talented, but like Len was saying earlier, his bad team mm -hmm. I'm not saying he could be Hall of Famer, but he can have a team mech type impact, a team mm -hmm. type game. Because he has the mentality I think you need to be in the league. Mm -hmm. But he's coming in the league as a scorer. Mm -hmm. Going to the NBA as a scorer is one of the hardest positions to go in as. It's a scorer because you have to be consistent. You have to keep it up year after year after year. I think he's built for it. I think, so as far as I've seen everything with him so far, talking to the media, the way he carries himself, even when he was in college, I think he's built for that New York media. So I don't think the media is really going to influence him either which way. But like, I just think he just needs to stay in the gym and play like, I don't know. I think I got I got very high hopes for him. I just think he needs to stay in the gym and keep working because when he's with Coach Fizz, like we just said, we just broke down how the coach is coach. Fizz is going to let him be him. Right. Considering that he listens and he understands certain situations. So he's going to have more than enough opportunity to have a great impact. I can see the impact of Jason Tatum. Mm -hmm. When he was doing for the Celtics his Ooh. first year. Sure. I see that impact for the Knicks. Yo, if he do that, I would be, I'll be but excited. The, is, the pieces around him, you don't really know. Like, yes, you can look at it and say, a lot of people say, like, oh, he's a ball hog and he's this and that. But that's when he was in college. Right. Now you're in the NBA. Everybody in the NBA is an NBA player. Right. In college, you got to kind of take it out of certain people's hands because they're not as talented as him as Zion was. Right, right, right. Everybody on the team is either as talented or even more talented than he is. So I'm, I'm anxious to see what he does. Like a lot of people compare him to like James Harden, the type of shots he take. Mm -hmm. But yes, he's gonna have like all young people gonna have gonna have difficulty taking the right shots when you're in the NBA. Right. Until you learn which shots is good and how to get your shots off. And, and you like study and you study film. He's supposed to struggle your first year, mm -hmm. but I think he's smart enough and he has. He's not. He got kind of to me. He got kind of like a Paul Pierce body. Not as big, but it's kind of like, it's not super muscular, mm -hmm. but he's strong as an ox. I can tell. Yeah, Just yeah. looking at him, he's not, he's not as soft. He's not, he's not fragile. Like, he's strong enough to have some bumps. So, it's gonna, I can see the same stuff he always had to do, plus maybe even more. Whoa. First year. Wow. In the NBA, if you play enough minutes, it's just because it's longer. The games are longer. Let's keep it real. Like, the defense is not the same. Mm -hmm. and they're not going to be hopping in just on him. You got Dennis Smith. You got all these other pieces. Julius so Randle. going to be hard. So that game, yeah, they're going to lock into him, double team him, and stuff like that. But I think he's. I think he'll be fine. I think. I don't know. I think he'll be fine. All right. Um, I just feel with Zion to be rookie of the year and all that, but we're going to see what happens because it never really from the last I can remember. I don't remember the last time a person comes in. The favorite to win rookie of the year, free and since the draft, mm -hmm. he still win rookie of the year. I don't remember the last time that happened. Right. Last year is my boy from from the Bahamas, um, the big kid, um, eight. Like everybody thought he was gonna be rookie of the year. Look, okay. just came out of nowhere and like had one of the greatest years as a rookie ever. Right. Like, no one has seen that coming. So we're gonna see what happens. I think RJ have a. I think he should definitely be in the conversation when it's all said and done to at least be rookie of the year. Or he should at least make the second team all rookies. That's the that's the upside I have for him this year. Right. And now you, Glenn, what do you think about RJ Barrett and what he's gonna do this year? Well, the question is gonna be consistency, right? There's 82 games in the NBA. Uh, will he come every 
night ready to play? Can he come every night ready to play? Will the Knicks stay with him if he's not ready every night? Will they coach him through it? Will they get him ready for it? Uh, R.J. Barrett is one of my favorite players. Jerome said it. He reminds me of the T-Mac type player. Okay. Right? Uh, so it's one of my favorite coming out of the draft. But the question is for him, I think it's going to be consistent. I, I can't, the verdict is going to be out on him because it's a New York market. It's a lot expected of him. It's not New York. Okay. Um, Zion is in New Orleans. The New York market is totally different than, than the, the New Orleans market. I think that we're going to have to see. We're going to have to wait and see and give him the time that he needs to develop. But mm-hmm. in five years, I guarantee you we're going to be talking about R.J. Barrett as an all-star. Right. Um, the Knicks need to keep him around. Hopefully he's going to be on the Knicks at that time <laughs> when we start saying that. Right. I, I, I honestly think we're going to have to wait and see. I don't, I don't know that he's going to make that kind of impact that we want him to make. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially because we have all of the other players that have, been, that have come on the mix. Uh, and we're talking about, you know, like, that the Dennis Smith. You, uh, you, know, I, you know, another player that I like is, um, I live in Tampa, so I like, uh, uh, we, we watch the Orlando games. Alfred Payne, that's mm-hmm. actually a pretty good player. Yeah, right. He's a really good player. He's a really good player. Yeah, and, um, you know, you got the Taj Gift that's going to give you the, the hustle. Mm-hmm. Marcus Smart that's going to give you that hustle. Marcus um, Morris. Morris. So, I, Marcus Morris, sorry. Mm-hmm. Marcus Morris, sorry. Uh, but I think that they need to play a, a even an even game. They, they can't be a, a, a someone that's averaging 30 mm-hmm. and everybody that's averaging under 20. Uh, you mean so spread, spread the ball, spread the wealth. They, they have to. You know like how the Detroit Pistons had like that, like, uh, that championship Detroit Pistons. Chauncey Billups. Like was with something. They, they need to be like that on the net. Uh, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see how we'll see how they do. I don't, I don't think we're going to get too much out of RJ this year. Mm-hmm. But in the future, I think be a star. Right, I, I believe what you say because RJ, like I said, yo, I, I really hope he turns into T Mac because y'all compare him to T Mac. Shoot, if we if he turns into T Mac, T Mac was one of my favorite players too. I like the way he played. You know, one of the knocks on him is his jump shot. But in order to be a scorer in the NBA, you don't have to shoot lights out forty percent from the three point line. You know what I'm saying? If the jump shot's not falling, you go to the mid range. Mid range not working, you go to the post. You can go to the basket. Like there's numerous ways to score. You don't have to be a great jump shooter. In order to have an impact on the game, it helps, but you don't have to have that. And with that being said, um, his position on the Knicks is kind of deep because you have Alonzo Trier. He kind of he kind of reminds me of Lou Williams. Like if he got it going, are you going to take him out the game? He also plays shooting guard. And when Alonzo Trier got it going, he's like a microwave. Like you know, people can't stay in front of him. He got that game where he's you know bop 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 and hit you. You know what I'm saying? He get to the basket. He gets, he's strong with getting to the basket. And I think Alonzo Trier actually shot 39 to 40% from the three-point range So last year. So RJ is going to have to prove himself early because you got Alonzo Trier at his, at his position. You got Damian Dotson, who's more of a 3 and three, three and D type of guy. Then you got Wayne Ellington. They just picked up Wayne Ellington and then Reggie, Reg, Reggie Bullock. But Reggie Bullock right now is hurt. But you, you got numerous players that can play the three. I mean, play the two. And then also we have um, um That's yeah. a good problem to have. Yeah, definitely. That's De- a good problem to have, rather than not having anybody, you know what I mean? So that's a good problem for the Knicks to have. So All right. So now we're gonna get on we're gonna touch on one more subject before we close it out and then we're gonna go with our predictions for next year. So I wanna talk about, you know, our biggest acquisition this summer. You know, we thought it was gonna be Kevin Durant, we thought it was gonna be Kyrie Irving, you know, they made me look like a fool. Because I had numerous <laughs> episodes speaking of why Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving was going to the Knicks. I had inside information of people telling me that he was coming to the Knicks. I think everybody got it wrong. They was always coming to New York, but they decided to choose Brooklyn. I would say up until that night, Kyrie Irving kept going back and forth into his hotel that Kevin Durant was really thinking about coming to the Knicks, but he didn't want to come by himself. So then he chose to go to um, Brooklyn with um, DeAndre Jordan and Kyrie Irving. But... All that is said and done. Forget about Kevin Durant. We got Julius Randle instead. So Julius Randle, every year, I think, I don't know if this is his fourth year. I, I believe maybe it's his fourth year. Every year he's been in the NBA, his stats has got better. He's, he averaged about, I think he averaged like 23, 24 points last year. 24 points per game. So, Jerome, Julius Randle. Um, 
I predicted him last episode that this year he's going to be a borderline all-star. I think he could average about 26 and 10, 26 points, 10 rebounds this year. It's not that many good power forwards in the East. If you think about it, you got Blake Griffin, you got Greek Freak. Who, who else is there, Jerome? Um, Glenn, you name other power forwards in the, in the East that's dominant? Now, so, uh, so Al Horford, Al Horford, right? Right. Right. So, right. So, what? There's a spot over there. So, what do you think about Julius Randle and uh, how he could help the Knicks? And it, it, do you agree with me that he could be a potential All Star? I think I just thought about it just now, but I think Julius Randle. Yeah, I can see that borderline also, especially being in the East. But the East is, the way they do it now, it's not just power forward. If it was just by his position, I'd say definitely. Right. But you could be small forward, center, or power forward. So it kind of mixes it up. So I can see it being borderline. Because you do got, you do got um, like I said, um, Serge Ibaka, and then you got Marc Gasol. Yeah, they're older, but they still don't have good years, and they might be knocking on the door just like him. So I don't. I can see him being a borderline all star, but even more with him and Fitzdale. That's what I like, him and Fitz. Because Fitzdale, I just thought about it. Didn't Fitzdale coach Zach Randolph? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. he reminds, I just thought about that. Reminds, he reminds me a lot of Zach Randolph. Like, mm -hmm. the same person as Zach Randolph. And so Fitz, I think, would know how to handle him, know how to give him certain insights, and, and he'll get better with that. But I've always been a fan of Julius Randolph from the beginning. Like, when he came out of college, I thought he was good. A lot of people with the Lakers are saying, like, oh, he has no moves, he's just big. I'm like, no, that guy's actually good. Like, his hustle, his energy, to be that big and to move how fast he moves, it says something about somebody with that, with, with his body built the way it's built. Right. So, like, he's not scared of anybody. He proved that a few times. He got in a few people's faces, veterans. Was it Kevin Durant? No, Kevin Garnett, he got in his face. But he's still playing, like, come on. They, too many people got in front of Kevin Garnett. Right. So it's just like you know, like his toughness is there. You know, he's a team player because he likes to run that power forward point position. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be fun playing with him, especially with Fitz in his corner. Because like even when, even in New Orleans, a lot of people didn't like him. Like you just said, yeah, he was twenty four. <laughs> like he has some numbers out there. Right. So like, I think I think he's going to be one of their better players. He has to be one of their better players moving forward because he's definitely a veteran. He has something to prove because. Yeah, yeah, I got him instead of Kevin Durant or whoever else. You got possibly could have got. Right. So it's already know how the Knicks fans are going to be. Now, the New York fans are going to be. Mm -hmm. well, we got this big, I mean, instead of that. Like, oh, <laughs> he has stuff to prove. I'm, I'm definitely behind him. There's one of the players on that team that I'm behind 100%. It's definitely him. Like, I just love his game. He recently showed him working out with Carmelo Anthony, had that little mid range pull up and the, the head base and all that. I think. I think he gets better every single year since he's been in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I don't see how you can't not like a guy like that. Every single year he's been in the work and every single year he gets better. So I just think, boom, I can see, it just depends on his mindset. It seems like it's in the right way. Mm -hmm. So I can see him being born a lot of all this year, especially in that East. I really, I'm really trying to think, like, who else in the East that's always forward? Right. Like, yeah, you got the Greek freak and all of them, but I don't, I got a little game for I think of them. Who, who are the coaches going to? Yeah, who are the coaches? And I can see a lot of coaches liking his impact and liking right. the way how he's going to play with the Knicks. Especially if the Knicks do good and, and they're winning games by an all-star break, I can see him being an all-star. It all depends on the team aspect. Because if the Knicks are doing good, somebody on that team is going to be an all-star. Right. Now, all the pieces they have, it has to be him. Right. Or Dennis Smith. Right. Dennis Smith as a point guard is even harder than he's. Right, you know, right. He's hard all over. So right. I can see him being the one to get in out of everybody else on that team moving forward. All right. Especially this year. And what about you, Glenn? What do you think about Julius Randle, his game and the impact he's going to have? Like like we just mentioned, his stats. But um, stats and everything is good, right? But how does it help your team win? Do you think Julius yeah. Randle is going to have an impact where, yes, he's averaging 26, but guess what? The Knicks is getting smacked every night. Or is it going to be like a Mari type impact where it's like, yo, the Knicks are in there every game. New York is buzzing. Julius Randle is doing his thing. Uh, who knows? Maybe they might have a possibility to go to the playoffs. Or you'll be like, nah, man, they're going to be sorry. And he's going to score yeah. and it's not going to matter. Yeah, I think Julius Randle is going to be a 
Yeah, I think that Julius Randle is going to do um, good. This week. Correct me if I'm wrong, Darren. Julius Randle came to the summer league game with the dip set stuff. Right? <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> he's stuck in the nineties, two thousands. He has confidence right now. Uh huh. They signed me. They wanted me. They wanted. I'm the guy. I'm the guy in New York. Right. Mm-hmm. That tells me that he's going to go into it this year, saying, "Okay, I'm confident. I'm going to play my game. I'm calm. I'm ready." I got the coach behind me. I got the team behind me. And I'm going to do what I have to do to make us win. Right. And Fizz is a good coach. He's a good coach, man. So we'll see. I mean, uh, I, I definitely think he has the potential to be an all-star. I think he can make the all-star team. And I think that he can benefit the Knicks in a positive way, not just by points. Uh, he's not just a points guy. He's going to go out and get rebounds. He is a team. <laughs> So he will have that positive impact on him. He has a very positive impact on them when he came to the Knicks. Uh, you know, he's not going to have a negative impact for sure. He's, he's not just going to be one of those guys who are like, I'm getting my money. He already got the money. He got the money. What right. Is, what is he going to say? Oh, I just want points. But he got this. He can't pay. Right. He right. Can, right. Right. So he's going to be in there. He wants to win. He wants to prove. Listen, I was on LA. They didn't want me. Right. I was on New Orleans. They traded me to the. Uh, or not traded me. They. they the Knicks gave me the money. They, you know, they wanted to go a different direction. The Knicks gave me the money. This is where I want to be. This is what I'm going to do. And I see him being a, a part of their success this year. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so, what I like about the Knicks team also is that um, you got a lot of players that actually say they say they want to be here. They always wanted to be a Nick. You know, like you said, you got Julius Randle with the Dipset shirt. You got uh, R.J. Barrett crying, saying <laughs> you got R.J. Barrett crying, saying that um, uh, you know he always he, his family grew up in New York and that he always wanted to be on the Knicks, and you know, um, you got Kevin Knox last year. He said he wanted to be with the Knicks. You know what I'm saying? But with that being said, remember Pozinga said that they, when he got drafted, he wanted to be on the Knicks, and then last year he said, "Yo, get me out of here." So hopefully, you know, the Knicks will treat their players right, and the players will be loyal to the Knicks. And we have some camaraderie throughout the team. And like I, like you said, um, Glenn, if they play together, I think they could be a borderline playoff team. I don't know if you two guys agree with me, but that's what we're going to go into next year. Predictions for the season. I'm going to go first. And, you know, I'm always optimistic about the Knicks. You know, call it being, uh, I don't know, a homer if you want to. <laughs> but um, I say, man, I mean... What they ha- had last year, 17 games? I think with Coach Fisdale, with the talent that they have, R.J. Barrett, if he has a good year, you got Julius Randle and, and Dennis Smith. It really depends on Julius Randle and Dennis Smith. If they could get everybody together to play together, I feel like 41 to 44 games is possible. Like They could be like a 500 team and maybe, you know what I'm saying? Like 500 is possible for the Knicks to be like a 500 team. And I don't know if that's going to be like a 7 or 8 seed in the East. Who knows? Jerome, what are your predictions of the Knicks next year? Man, 42 games? That's, that's, isn't that a lot in the East? Like, 42 games, I think you like, you like a top four seed? Nah, nah, seriously. Don't, no, Jerome, seriously, I think the Nets won 43 last year. 43, 40. The, 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 Brooklyn Nets won 43 games last year. And there was one seed. Eight, number eight, I believe. Oh. <laughs> it ain't that bad. The West is crazy. Yeah. But I would say the Knicks, I didn't have them winning that much, but it's not far behind. Mm-hmm. It's going be somewhere in the mid 30s. Okay. I did get to research this. <laughs> when I looked it up, in 2013 was the last time they won 37 games. So I see that should be where they're chasing. That would be like the best season the last. Seven years? No, wait, seven years? Wait, seven years? Wait, wait. When was the 54 wins? When they had J.R. Carmelo? When they were in second place, right? Yeah, they had 54 wins. How long? That was a long, that was that long ago? That was 10 years ago? I, I think I looked on like, I was 13 to 14, they won 37. Maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah. That was six years ago. They lost to the, yeah, that sounds about right, because they lost to the, they lost, uh, you talking about when they had Stoudemire? That was like 2010. Well, oh. Like 11, 12, no, yeah, that was 2011, 2012, probably, when they had 54 yeah, wins. Next year is when yeah. they won 37. So I'm saying, like, I'm not saying, I have them winning 37 or below. All right. So I'm having a better year than 2013, 14, but still, 
that would be the best year they have in the last six, seven years. But I think that's a great start. Whether or not they make the playoffs, it's like, like I just said, 37 games, you said 42 to get you in. So they're five games away, they're knocking on the door. That's why I have to matter. All right. In that area. Either make it like what you said, going 50%, or 37, a little bit below, and maybe get that ninth seed and just try of making the playoffs. But it's the East. You know, West is so strong this year, and the East is all over. I think 37 might get them in there. So I don't, it just all depends on how the league is going and the games they're playing. But I think, I think it should definitely be competitive. That's why I'm really excited. I didn't realize they only won 17 games. <laughs> So Glenn, what, what, so Glenn, what you got? What you? What's your prediction? Well, Dan, first of all, I gotta say I love your optimism. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we got we got Milwaukee, we got um, we got uh, Philly, we got uh, Washington, we got um, the Celtics. Yo, but wait, wait, let me. Can I? Don't mean to cut you off, but Washington was trash last year. But keep going. Yeah, but they still <laughs> got them two guys. They still got them two guys. All right. You know, The Bulls, yeah. We got Chicago. We got, uh, I mean, there's so many teams. Wait, wait, let me, let me just clear this up. The Bulls are not my second team. Let me clear this up. The Bulls are not my second team. I just like Zach Levine. He's one of my favorite players in the NBA. All right. Zach. <laughs> I'm just thinking all these teams, are they not going to finish over? But that's my, are those teams? That I just made not going to finish over five because everybody can't finish over five. Right. You know I mean? Yeah. But, so, but you know, you know why I give them the chance to do that is because I feel like with Fisdale and they're going to be a scrappy team. Like if you know anything about NBA players, is that they don't come to play every night. So if they play with that, you know, dog man. <laughs> Some nights you know, they got the uh, the RJ hype. They're going to be on TV more. They're not going to be on TV more. Not, right. not even not even that hype is the fact that. 40, 40, what is it, 82 games? 40 yeah. 40 of your game, they're going to play, they're going to play hard. Right. And you're ma- playing in the garden. Yeah. One of your games are in the garden. Right. That's the biggest problem right there. You're going to have to show up for 40 of your games. To the to the I don't care who it is, it's the garden. Right. You still want to perform in the garden. Right, so right. It makes it harder. And like what Glenn was touching on, I ain't think about it. You got like the Orlando Magic, you got like the Atlanta Hawks. Mm-hmm. Like those ain't teams that I'm saying definitely making the playoffs. But they're in the same situation the Knicks are. They're mm-hmm. just as hungry, they're just as young. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's going to be competitive in the same nation. Right. You know, it's like you said, like, they're going to be a scrappy team. But it's also going to be a lot of scrappy teams. <laughs> who's, trying to, who's trying to scrap it out the same way the Knicks are going to scrap it out? Right, I right. think the Knicks have the upper hand because they have, I think they have a better roster than the Atlanta Hawks and the Orlando Magics. Who before they got the, I think they have the perfect blend of great coach. Good right. veterans and then great young players. So right. I'm anxious to see what happens. Like, but it's like you just said with Chicago. I don't think Chicago is going to be better than the Knicks, but they have a lot of young players at the scrap. Right, a lot of hungry over there too. They're trying to have a good year too. So when they play each other, they, you got to see what happens when they play each other. Because yeah, that's what Chicago is. Yeah. Chicago is three out of the four. You know. Right. 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 I, that's what happens when they play each other. When they play teams like that, not when they play the Warriors right. and the Lakers and stuff like that. Like Got Chicago it. might beat the Lakers and the Knicks might lose them. I, to my opinion, that don't matter. It matters what you're doing with guys on your level. Because those games are up and down. LeBron probably want to play that game, and that's how the Knicks won or whatever. Mike right. Arthur. Right. It's all depends. I just think it's a lot of you looking forward. Like I was telling Glenn earlier, the NBA is more spread out, so it's a lot of teams that are basically even. It's great for the Knicks, but it's bad for the Knicks. The same thing that a lot of teams are even, or just as good as them, are knocking on the door, thinking the same thing that they're thinking. Right. So it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting year for basketball in the NBA. Absolutely. Right. Right. Thirty eight. Thirty eight. Thirty eight. You said thirty eight wins is where I got. Thirty eight. All right. Even higher than Jerome. (laughs) (laughs) One more game than Jerome. All right. So thirty eight and thirty seven, and I'm going for forty three. I feel like they nah, could be- matter of fact, I'm going 38 because I said they have to have a better year than 2000. 
Yeah, all right. Thirty seven. So I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying thirty eight. Yeah, thirty eight. I think thirty eight and below. I'll give him thirty eight. I give him thirty eight and below. I'm with Glenn. Yeah. All right. So thirty eight it is, and I got, and I. It's still a great year. Thirty eight means that's the best season I had in the last seven years. <laughs> Shame. All right, so I mean, <laughs> all, along is his progression. That's what I'm saying. As long as they borderline playoffs, and then if they win 38 this year, hopefully next year, you know, we be in the four, high 40s, you know, or fi- or 50s, you know. So you never know, man. I, I just think they need to push it up pace, you know. Like I said, like. Hey, 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 one time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's. All right, let's. But I just want to say I appreciate both you guys. You know you're my homies for life. I appreciate you guys coming on my show. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and giving your knowledge of the game and what you think the Knicks is going to be this year. And um, we got to do this again sometime. I don't know if y'all are too busy or not. We could make this a regular thing. It's up to y'all. You know what I'm saying? You know my homies. You know. So, um, yeah, good, good yeah, look. just let me know. I'm, I'll talk about the Knicks all day. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be in the building. I'm gonna be in the building. Um, for the. Uh, I got tickets. I got. Oh, I don't know. No, not not for that game, but uh, for their first preseason game, they got the Atlanta Hawks. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to. So that's gonna be Dennis Smith versus Trey Young. So I'm gonna be in the building at that game, and then after that, the I think on October in October they play the Bulls. I'm gonna be there when they play the Bulls, so I get to see Zach Levine and my man Dennis Smith Jr. You know, my two of my favorite players. But um, like I said, man, we gotta do this again sometime. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's Nixon Night TV. Peace.